Welcome to the best of high school sports in Northern California, specifically Sacramento. We are the Bee Prep Show. And we're coming to you from St. Francis High School in the heart of Sacramento for one of the best high school rivalry atmospheres you'll find anywhere on the West Coast. Welcome back for another edition of the B Prep Show. I'm your host, Mike Finnerty. Joined as always by my partner, Joe Davidson, the Sacramento B. Joe, you with me? Joe. Oh, hey, you know what? <laughs> it's a little loud in here. I got my earplugs here. <laughs> We're here at St. Francis High School called the Holy Court Showdown with the Troubadours of St. Francis, the host team, taking on rival and Sacramento B number one, Christian Brothers. St. Francis coach Lynn Wright says, don't come in this gym without earplugs. She wouldn't even let her parents in here. She said, it's too loud for you. <laughs> we saw them out there in the parking lot. They're, they're trying to get in. That is good. And St. Francis taking on Christian Brothers, a big time top five matchup. We got lots of matchups like that in this week's show. But Joe, we're gonna start off with football. Football is big every week. This is week one. Oh yeah, and you know, to be more accurate, it's, it's there are 10 games. So that's why there's a zero week and week one and all that. Bottom line is the football round here is terrific. You'll see in the highlights, so many good players, great atmosphere everywhere. Enough of us, let's get you to our football highlights. We take you out to reel into high school on a warm Friday evening where the host Knights were matched up against the Roseville Tigers. Rio Linda in the home black looking to go 2-0 to start the season while Roseville was seeking to bounce back from its tough loss a week ago. Knights' new head coach Justin Reber making his home debut, taking over for the retiring Mike Morris who is checking things out from a new perspective on the field. So to the action we go, Roseville's first possession and getting loose is Shea O'Hara who takes it down the field and deep into Rio Linda territory. A few plays later, it's Bryce Crouch scoring from in close. Then the Tigers miss the extra point, it's box. So with just a minute left to go in the first, Roseville goes up 6-0. Late second quarter now, Rio Linda puts together an impressive drive that's capped off by the Zach Burden quarterback keeper up the middle. The big six foot three, 200 pounder just gets over the line for a touchdown. Rio Linda also misses the extra point. So with 3.35 left in the half, we're all tied up at six. On the ensuing kickoff, Rozo's Blake Rayback, he's gonna find some daylight. He gets a huge return up the middle and down the left side, putting the Tigers in business at the real end of 15. Moments later, Roseville cashes in when it goes back to Crouch. He scores from 20 yards out for his second touchdown of the half. Tigers go for two with Michael Dobler finding Carson Miller in the end zone. And now Rosal is back on top at 14-6 late in the half. After that, the rest of this game belonged to Rio Linda and its star running back Marcel Brown, one of the best in the state. Brown would rush for a pair of touchdowns on the night to go with 220 yards as Rio Linda prevails by a final of 24-14 and will play at Kasunas Oaks this week. We go from Rio Linda over to Intercom High School, just a few miles away where the Monterey Trail Mustangs of Elk Grove were on the road to take on Terry Stark and his Tigers. Both teams entered this game with records of 1-0, both ranked in the Sacramento Bees top 20, but this first half was all Monterey Trail. The Mustangs had a huge second quarter, scoring 29 points to take a 29-14 lead to the half. So we're gonna pick it up. Late third quarter, Tigers on the move as Jimmy Johnson takes it down the right side to the Mustangs 11 yard line. That's gonna set up this Jonathan Henry to CJ Garman touchdown pass with 4.49 left in the third, putting Intercom back in this game down 29-21. Monterey Trail continue to go back to the ground with the Veer offense feeding Trey Nahas over and over again, chewing time off the clock. Nahas would finish the game with 148 yards on 20 carries and two touchdowns. Fourth quarter now, under five minutes to go, Tigers moving the ball and they go back to the air again. This time it's Henry to Johnson, a terrific pass and catch to get the Tigers to within two. However, they miss on the two point conversion, but now within two at 29-27 with 4.25 to go. Final play of the game, 3.6 seconds left on the clock. Intercom attempting a 58-yard field goal and it comes up short as Monterey Trail hangs on in the second half to beat Intercom 29-27. Mustangs improved to 2-0 and after the game, Monterey Trail head coach TJ Ewing spoke of his team's effort and his respect for Intercom. 
Well, you know, uh, our schedule is tough. We have good teams, and it helps us for our league. Our league is really, really tough. So playing Intercommit here, it's just great adversity to go out and play a team like that. And uh, I thought it was an excellent game. Our kids uh, found a way at the end there. But uh, give, give a lot of credit to Intercom coming back and fighting back in the game, scratching. You, you can't think anything else. They're going to do that. That's Intercom. That's how they play, and this is a great game. I can't, I can't even say it right now. I'm just too happy right now. But it was a big win, though, because uh, we had to play defense in the end, and, and that's all that matters. All right, Joe, always good action on the gridiron. We got the top 20 once again. What do you make of it? Well, you know, it's neat to see area teams, Folsom, Grant taking on teams from Fresno. Our section is really strong, so is the central section. It's nice to see teams taking each other on from out of section. Uh, some teams did not play. Burbank did not play this week. Neither did Elk Grove last week, rather, but they'll gear up real fast. Yeah, you bet. All right, when we come back from the break, we've got plenty more. Stick around. This is your RAM Auto Update. Just in, the classic term used car is old-fashioned, outdated, and no longer of any particular relevance. Let's party. The Roseville Auto Mall is throwing a massive factory-certified pre-owned sales event. That means incredible savings on just about every kind of car in the world. All factory certified. It's happening now. It's going fast. In layman terms, skedaddle. The Roseville Auto Mall driven to be the best. Welcome back to the Bees Prep Shows, where we bring in the best of high school sports in Northern California, Sacramento in specific. Brought to you by our good friends of Save Mart. Mike, volleyball so big in the fall. We're at one of the fabulous venues, St. Francis High School here in Sacramento. I'm yelling at you. And we're also <laughs> credentialed. Yell. It's an important game here, the Holy Court. Why is this match so important? You've seen it over the years. We're still yelling at each other, trying to hear each other. Why is this so unique? It's a long time rivalry, Joe. Just like that, the Holy Bowl, they got their Holy Court match. And they're two very good teams. These are teams that tend to win section championships. So this is another year. Who gets it this year? Enough of us, more highlights. You won't find a bigger crowd or a bigger rivalry when it comes to Sacramento area volleyball. It's the annual Holy Court Showdown featuring the Bees preseason number one ranked Christian Brothers Falcons taking on the host and number four St. Francis Troubadours. St. Francis with its all new lineup, but once again led by Lynn Wright, coach for the Troubadours since 1989 and a new member of the CIF Sac Joaquin section Hall of Fame as of last month. This match was a battle early and it started in the first set with St. Francis' Kylie Green tying it at two all. Later in the set, Lauren Overstreet delivers with a kill for the Falcons, but it comes right back to her. She gets a second one to go. We're all tied up at 18. Now, tied at 25, the Troubadours go back to Green who gets the final two points to put it away, giving St. Francis the first set, 27-25. The second set would be all St. Francis. The ace here makes it 15-5 Troubadours. Then Anna Donald goes for the big hit. The ball's tipped, but it falls in to make it 19-9. Then looking to take game two, Marissa Golnick sets up the lefty Lizzie Corphy, and that gives St. Francis a second set at 25-13 for a 2-0 lead in the match. Credit to Christian Brothers, though, for not giving up. The Falcons take the third set here with Nastasha Bauman setting up Elizabeth Robinson that for the game winner. Christian Brothers stay close in the fourth set, but it was too much St. Francis on this night as the Troubadours take the fourth set 25-19 and they take the match three games to one and it was all smiles for St. Francis after the match. They are a great team. They look out for each other top to bottom, all 18 of them. My seniors are doing a fabulous job, including the sophomores and freshmen and the new juniors to the team. They push each other at practice every single day. Um, just like the seniors did last year with the, the seniors that graduated, these guys are doing a great job leading, and I'm really, really proud of them. We really put it together at the end there. It was a great start last night. Not a good start, but we really, really started out strong, and it was so great. All right, Mike, good highlights, great student sections, great win. This will help both teams, and then kudos to ambitious scheduling. If I'm not yelling loud enough, just give me a wink or something. <laughs> How about at El Camino in Sacramento? You talk about an old school, open in 1950, new football field, new volleyball court, good looking veteran team there for the Eagles taking on Rockland. Yeah, you got Rockland with Maddie Haynes, one of the best in the area. And then you've got El Camino with what we'll call a three headed monster, but it's a good monster. Devin Horanda, Michaela Nachetti, and of course, Dahlberg, Elizabeth Dahlberg, and that's a good team. And they're expected to be a contender for a championship. So again, we got a good one right here. 
It's another matchup featuring two of the area's top teams where the El Camino Eagles were on their brand new home floor, taking on the Rockland Thunder, a team that eliminated the Eagles in last year's Division II section semifinals. Well, El Camino wasn't about to sit around and wait for the game to come to them because the Eagles were on fire from the start, storming out to a 17-5 game one advantage. More Eagles as Michaela Nachetti finds a side to go up 19-6. It's Nachetti again. She drills this one to make it 21-7. And then El Camino closes out game one, getting the block at the net. They take it 25-7. All right, second set action now. Devin Horrenda is going to set up Mackenzie Reeder of Sparta. Eagles by four. And what can you say about the play of Nachetti, who would finish the night with 18 kills, a game high. Horrenda to Nachetti again right here puts El Camino up 18-7, cruising right along before putting the second set away 25-16, putting the Eagles in command two games to none. Rockland played much better in the third set, led by the play of his junior star in Cal Kmit, six foot four outside hitter Maddie Haynes, who had 13 kills. Another impressive player for Rockland has been five foot 11 freshman Abby Marjma, but this night was all about the play of El Camino, which takes over as the B's new number one ranked team. Eagles edge the Thunder in Game 3, 25-23, and get the 3-0 sweep. El Camino close out the week as champions of the Carmichael Invitational Tournament, but after the win over Rockland, it was the team's experience as being credited for this year's early success. Yeah, we, you know, we get, we're coming in with a lot of experience, so we're probably a little ahead of the game right now. Uh, we came out on fire tonight. The girls were fired up about this match. Last year's loss kind of sat, sat with them for a little bit. So they came out uh, fired up, ready to go. I was really proud of the way they played. All right, how about that nice sparkling floor? Veteran leadership on both sides, especially for El Camino. Granite Bay up in Placer County. The Grizzlies went unbeaten last season, won the section. NorCal State Division One Championship. Are they still a factor? Oh, they are still a factor. Do not count them out. They have three quality players on that team. Libby Dieters, Brooke Kersberger, and you got Bridget Bell. So you have a, a terrific three-person three team right there. But they've got depth, Joe. So let's get to the game. It was a good one. We'll wrap up our volleyball highlights with a foundation game showdown. They had the Rio Americana Raiders on the road to score off against the defending Division I state champion Granite Bay Grizzlies, a team that hadn't lost a game since coming up short to St. Francis in the 2012 NorCal Finals. Game one was closed, but Rio Americano's Maddie Merlino put her team up here by one at 11 to 10. Score went back and forth with Rio's Madison Hunziker putting her Raiders up 23-21. However, Granite Bay would seize the lead back right here at 25-24, and then delivering on the game winner was Brooke Hirschberger. The Grizzlies take the opening set 26-24. Second set now, and it's all Grizzlies. Hirschberger with the slam makes it 13 to five. Later on, it's Hirschberger again. This for the 25-13 game winner, putting Granite Bay in the driver's seat, up two games to none. Grizzlies going for the sweep, but Rio Americano didn't go away quietly at all. Down the stretch, it's just too much Granite Bay. The Grizzlies get a 25-20 third set win and get the sweep. Two nights later, Granite Bay would fall to St. Francis, snapping its winning streak at 46 games. All right, Mike, good stuff there. Granite Bay is always going to be a factor there. Later in this show, you sit down with Brooke Hershberger, the real star there. She's a scholar, much smarter than you and I. Yeah, that's right. Right now, we'll take you to break with our top 20 rankings. There's a history you feel when you visit any of the Von Hausen automotive dealerships. You'll sense the quality of Mercedes-Benz, and you'll experience the low-pressure atmosphere that comes from two generations of family ownership. Mercedes-Benz of Sacramento, Mercedes-Benz of Eldorado Hills, and Mercedes-Benz of Rockland. Three great reasons to drive one of the world's best automobiles. Come feel the difference or visit VonHausen.com. We'd like to thank our sponsors, starting with Save Mart Supermarkets, where fresh comes first. Shop at Save Mart up and down the Central Valley. Schools, financial credit union, banking for everyone, value, convenience, and emerging technology. Von Housen Automotive Group, celebrating 50 years with Mercedes-Benz. Stop dreaming and start driving. Roseville Auto Mall, if you're looking for a used car, go to the Roseville Auto Mall with over 6,000 vehicles to choose from. 
All right, good to be back with you as we talk about high school sports in Northern California. Strong emphasis in Sacramento, brought to you by our good friends from Save Mart. You get to learn about the football teams, the soccer teams, the volleyball teams. Sometimes you get some of these scholar athletes that put everybody to shame. Yeah, Brooke Hershberger of Granite Bay, she comes from a family of athletes, and recently I caught up with her. We talk about her commitment to Princeton, about the athletes in the family, and this year's Granite Bay team. And did she talk about her dad who's got the guns of anybody? Much bigger than those. off a Division I state championship, entering her senior year and knowing that an Ivy League education is in her future, life is good for Granite Bay Volleyball star Brooke Hirschberger. On the court though, it's a new look Grizzlies team with their top three players all graduating. So that means a new role for Hirschberger as a leader. Uh, yeah, last year no, I was the junior looking up to Taylor. Now I'm almost the role model this year and I, I like having that role. I like being the uh, role model for everybody and you know, I've been working hard and trying to like be a good example. Repeating as state champions would be a tall order, but the goals are still set high. First thing we did our very first practice, we wrote down our goals, and it's to get back to sections. I mean, I, we're obviously not going to be 45-0 this year, but, you know, we're always going to be tr working hard, and that's definitely one of our goals, get back to sections. Off the court, academics are certainly important to Hershberger, so her recent commitment to Princeton only made perfect sense, even if she is still undecided on her major. Academics are very important for me. I've been um, looking at my major a lot, but you know, I'm still not really sure. Math is kind of something I'm interested in, but I'm still undecided at the moment. I just fell in love with the school when I visited. The girls were all amazing. I love the coach, and just the campus is beautiful. It just, it really fit me, you know. So where does Hirschberger get her athleticism? Well, she comes from a family of athletes, which includes her brother Bo, who was a star linebacker for Granite Bay's 2012 state championship and is now playing rugby on scholarship. So we had to ask, who is the best athlete in the Hirschberger family? I think we're all kind of tied. I mean, my brother's playing rugby at Cal now. My dad played football in college. My mom was into cross country. I mean, we're all kind of even, you know, and we all push each other. We go to the gym as a family, work out together and everything. and. We all push each other. <laughs> Looking at the Hirschberger family is certainly clear that working out is important. I work out all the time, but it's because they push me and they motivate me. And my brother just came home last week uh, from college for a day, and we went for a run and went to the gym together. So with the 2014 season underway, Hirschberger still likes what she sees with this year's team as well. well obviously, last year, I mean, we ha we were kind of a stacked team, and. I'm not going to say everything came easy last year, but it's going to be easier than it, it was easier last year than it was this year. But we're going to, we're all putting in a lot of hard work and we have a lot of good returning players. So everything looks good. I'm excited. Wow. How about that? Going to Princeton, a great scholar, having a good time as an athlete. What a, what a family. Who's the best athlete at that dinner table? I don't know. Well, like, I don't know if he could beat dad in an arm wrestling contest. Yeah, I don't know. And brother, brother Bo's pretty big guy himself. All right, Joe, let's move the show over to soccer now. These two teams met up. Soccer highlights now. We'll start with two teams ranked in the B's top 10. You have the Kasumas Oaks Wolfpack, the defending Division II section champion, and a team that hadn't lost in its last 25 games on the road, taking on the Pleasant Grove Eagles in an all Elk Grove showdown, bragging rights on the line. Kasumas Oaks looking to get on the board first. This kick by R.J. Morehouse gets it in close. A pack of Kasumas Oaks guys there to make the play. Someone gets it to go, and it's a 1-0 game at the 28th minute. Five minutes later, Pleasant Grove forward Michael Hirsch is taken down, and the Eagles are going to capitalize. Hirsch with the penalty kick. He gets it to go, tying it up at one apiece. Second half now, just moments in, Joe Rastani finds the left side of the net to give the Eagles their first lead, this at 2-1. For the balance of the match, it was all Pleasant Grove. You had her scoring again, a great shot. This time from the right side, upping Eagles' lead to 3-1 at the 57th minute. Brendan Lawn gets in the mix. He's gonna score on the penalty kick to make it 4-1. Pleasant Grove would add another goal late to make it 5-1, and they get the victory, improving to 2-1 overall, while also handing Kasuma Soaks its first loss of the season and snapping the Wolfpack's 25-game win streak. And finally, we'll wrap up our soccer highlights and our highlights for the show with the Monterey Trail Mustangs playing at El Camino to take on the host Eagles. El Camino started off the season at 0-2 after losses to number one ranked Jesuit, number two Granite Bay. Monterey Trail though had a tie in its only game, so how would this one go? 
Well, not so good if you're El Camino. The Mustang struck first with this goal by Arnold Arias at the 23rd minute, and it's 1-0 Monterey Trail. Good defense by the Mustangs helped to keep the Eagles off the board, so after the first half, it was still a 1-0 game. Second half now at the 56th minute, Oscar Avina makes good on a free shot. That's going to make it a 2-0 lead for Monterey Trail, and that's all that would be needed as the Mustangs deliver a shutout and beat the Eagles 2 to nothing. All right, Mike, you're great with the camera. Great highlights all the time. More soccer. Here's the Sacramento Bees, top 20. A credit union is a not-for-profit member-owned financial institution. Can your bank say that? Demand more from your financial institution. Make the switch to Schools Financial Credit Union for low loan rates, state-of-the-art technology, making accounts accessible anytime, anywhere, and more ATMs than most major banks. Anyone who lives, works, or worships in Sacramento and its surrounding counties is eligible to join. Be part of the credit union difference and bank happily ever after with Schools. Welcome back to the Bee Prep Show as we bring you the best of high school sports in Sacramento and specific brought to you by our good friends from Save Mark. Mike, first segment we talked football, a lot of volleyball. We're still yelling at each other, don't take it personal. <laughs> We're here at the Holy Court match between Christian Brothers of Sacramento, B ranked number one against longtime superpower St. Francis. We have to raise our voice, they raise the volume. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of raising up their game, we got this week's top performances with our Bonhausen Stars of the Week. This week's Von Housen Stars of the Week are Jake Browning of Folsom and Kylie Green of St. Francis. Browning, the 6'3", 205-pound quarterback for the Bulldogs, could win this award every week, but we honor Browning for his performance against Clovis North last week, completing 20 of 23 passes for 254 yards and six touchdowns, plus one rushing touchdown all in the first half. However, the highlight of this night was Browning setting California's career passing touchdown mark with 151, surpassing the previous mark set by Jimmy Clausen of 146 back in 2006. As for Green, the six-foot senior outside hitter for the Troubadours helped to lead her team to wins over number one ranked Christian Brothers and number two ranked Granite Bay, improving St. Francis to nine and two overall. In the Holy Court match against the Falcons, Green had a big time performance with 20 kills, which followed up her 17 kills against Oak Ridge the night before. Remember folks, if you want to see the show, do so every Tuesday on Comcast Sportsnet California. New shows Tuesday, re-airs Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And if they miss it on TV, Joe, where can they find it? On every Friday on SACB.com. We have high school news and notes every day in the paper and on SACB.com. We're everywhere because we understand the importance of high school sports, even if we have to yell about it. <laughs> Thank you for watching folks and we'll see you next week.